Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of uh, topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, as we are doing right now, and you can watch it at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. For those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, so similar to your so-and-so state library. Uh, and so we provide services and training to all types of libraries in Nebraska, so you will find um, topics on our show that are for all types of libraries. Public, academic, K-12 schools, uh, corrections, museums, all sorts of archives. Uh, pretty much our only criteria that it is something to do with libraries. Um, something cool we think they're doing, something we think they should, could be doing. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Um, and we sometimes have library commission staff that come on and do presentations about things we're offering specifically um, here in Nebraska. Um, but we also do bring in guest speakers as we, as we have this morning. Uh, this morning, good morning, uh, Jeremy is with us this morning. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning. And he is going to talk about to us about taking care of ourselves, which many of us definitely, well, have always, been, it's always been an issue <laughs> throughout life, but even more so potentially over the last year or so. So I'll just hand it over to you, Jeremy, to introduce yourself and um, tell us all about our mental maintenance that we can do. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jeremy Bolum, uh, Assistant Director at Lincoln Parish Library in Ruston, Louisiana. And that's Parish is a county system for those of you that are unaware of how Louisiana set up. We're back to the, the French. We have that basis where we call all of our counties parishes. So we're, I'm on the, the I-20 corridor in North Louisiana, which we like to refer to as the non-fun non part of the state. All the fun happens in the South, supposedly. But uh, we have two universities in my community, Louisiana Tech University and Grambling State University, which is a historically black college. Great, um, both great universities and wonderful to have in our community, especially when it comes to the library and getting things going around here. Um, mental maintenance is a topic that I'm not normally the kind of thing that I would present at one of these kinds of things, but it came up one part in my life when I needed uh, a little extra boost to get through something a little trying for me. Um, it wasn't actually COVID, it was before all that. So it can happen to us at any time in our life. And the main reason why I guess I feel that I can talk on this subject is because I've, it, I know that it helps and I know that it is hard and I know that it can actually help even the people that I consider the hard to help in, in that kind of category like myself. Cause so I call it self-care and mindfulness for the overwhelmed, impatient, fastidious, and quick tempered because I'm all of those things. <laughs> you can also add persnickety to the list because that's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you mentioned this earlier, we all need it and librarians especially, and why do librarians need more mental and self-care than anybody else is because we do care so much not only about a profession, but about our patrons and about our daily tasks and what it means to the wider world. So you've got to take care of yourself or you're not going to get very far. And before we begin, we're gonna, um, I just want you to know that the best practice is to just practice and to just begin and try and to make a start. Um, there is no right or wrong way to do any of this and there's definitely no wrong or right way that you should think that you have to do any of this. So just want to put that out there first off before we get started. All right, so self-care versus mindfulness, they're actually two different things and um, I'm going to separate them out today. The OED definition of self-care is rather scientifically based. It says the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's health, but for today I'm going to concentrate more on mental health and it's 
done through a simple question, asking what you need and following through with an honest answer. And that's the kicker. It's got to be an honest answer. And yes, that can include medical care, but it also means taking time off. This is me time. This is what you need to make your life a little bit better. Um, another good definition is a prolonged pleasurable, pleasurable time resulting in peace, happiness, and rejuvenation. So that's my favorite definition for self-care. Now, mindfulness is a tad different. It is a form of self-care, and later on I'm going to say it's the best practice of self-care. But this is the practice of paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. That definition comes from John Cabot Zinn and his um, book, um, Wherever You Go, There You Are. He is one of the main um, Americans that brought mindfulness practice and meditation to the common person in, in the West. So we thank him for that. And you can't mention mindfulness without talking about meditation. So we will be hitting on meditation and how that helps with a lot of things, and we will even practice doing a couple of meditations. Traditional meditation usually focuses on the breath, but there's also some other ways to do it, which we'll touch on as well. And I'm good with questions at any time, so feel free to type in anything, thoughts, cares, or what have you. Yeah, definitely use that question section, type it in. I've got the, I've got it open on my screen. I'll see anytime you guys type in, we'll jump in. Okay. So the difference between the benefits of self-care and mindfulness, for self-care, you've got better health, which of course usually is a reduction in stress. And it can also boost your self-esteem and confidence. It's your self-worth, reduces burnout, which is a really big one for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of us are probably experiencing burnout and maybe even a little bit of boredom because our job got a little monotonous during lockdown and um, you know a reduction in services and just being overburdened completely by having to come up with new service models so quickly during COVID. Um, it increases our capacity for empathy even though librarians usually don't have a problem with this but it also helps rejuvenate that empathy muscle that you have and it builds resilience which is your mental capacity to bounce back so much faster so that when you do fall down next time you're able to get back up a lot better it just makes your brain a lot healthier and then of course it models good healthy behavior to others around you the benefits of mindfulness of course are all of the above but it also includes greater awareness clarity and acceptance of your present reality um, especially through meditation. It strengthens the brain both cognitively and emotionally. Again, this can be done in the minute or it can be done through meditation. And healthier brain equals a healthier body and all this goes together and that will happen also with just basic self-care. Um, some of the other health benefits that have been proven through mindfulness practice and meditation combined are um, reduced uh, better sleep, reduction in pain, um, headaches, all those kinds of things that a lot of people struggle with health-wise that can cause problems on a daily basis. So I'm going to go through a rough guide on how to do each of these. So the self-care care quick guide, again, is asking what you need and following through with an honest answer. To me, this is living versus existing or thriving versus surviving. This is why we're, we're here. We're not just trying to make it from point A to point B. You, you need the pleasurable things to make yourself, to renew yourself, to be able to keep going, to, to exist and to, to survive. We're past that um, fight or flight time in our life and we should be able to take the time to do this for ourselves. Now, one thing about self-care is this is personal and sometimes very private needs, and nobody else needs to know what your self-care is or looks like. You don't have to share it with anybody. And there's even some tools that you can use, and I've got these listed in the handout that you'll be getting that are assessments that you can take where you score yourself through these six different areas 
in your life to know where you need, might need a little bit of help with self-care. So you've got the physical, uh, the psychological, your emotional, even your spiritual, personal, I have an asterisk on that because it's not in all tools, but um, it is in, in the one that I gave you. And then of course your professional needs as well. All of these models actually come from a book called, called Transforming the Pain, a workbook on vicarious traumatization for professor, professionals who work with traumatized clients. I think it's interesting that this was included in this workbook so that people who are undergoing stressful jobs and training um, are able to find a way to fall back and help themselves at the same time, that their needs are just as important as their clients. So a couple of examples of easy self-care and the categories that they would fall under is exercise is a form of physical self-care, a healthy diet, uh, of course, again, is physical, regular sleeping routine is physical as well, taking breaks is a good, easy way for professional boost, uh, relocating at lunch, this is one of my um, definite amens, I, I really like to get out there and, and get away from work as, at least once during the day. So lunch is when it can happen. And to use sick leave when you need it. A lot of people still come to work not feeling well and trying to make it through the day, but it usually ends up adding a little more stress. Now's a good time for you to use your chat window and share some of your ways that you do self-care. And we can, I'll start listing yeah, a couple of I mine as well. Yeah, that actually jumped out with the, the relocating at lunch and taking breaks. Um, for those of us like myself, except for I, I come in here into my office for over the past year, I've been coming in here just about once a week to run this show. But most of the time I'm working from at home. Um, and I have a separate computer room, but I, I don't do those things like I should. <laughs> yeah. Um, I grab my lunch from the kitchen, go back to my desk. Um, sometimes and um i'm not good at that i know well you should take your break oh yeah away, i know <laughs> away from work away from work I, I can go i have elsewhere i have other building rooms in the house to go to definitely but i just figure oh i'll just go here and it's, it's just keep doing things cruise through since i'm in i know that's wrong and bad yeah um are there any anything coming up in the chat window? I close my chat. Uh, window. No, yeah. If anybody has any ideas, what do you guys do for this, or um, the ways that you think some um, could work for this? Um, do you have somewhere you go out to lunch, to or um, a way that you take breaks? Um, here, where I am in my office, I know I, I used to, and and I was good at doing breaks. Um, we have here in Lincoln, Nebraska, they call the skywalks, which is um, over the street walkways around downtown. So you can walk these um, and not have to be outdoors. So in the middle of winter when it's snowing or in the middle of summer when it's 95 degrees out, I would walk those. And it was just, you know, you get out and walk it. And it's about a mile to walk the whole thing. That's that's nice. That's one of the things, you know, exercise mm -hmm. is always good. Mm -hmm. A couple of other things that you can do for self-care are, are uh, hobbies, of course, are a wonderful way to take it, to turn your mind off and turn it on to something different. Uh, if you have a compliment file, you can build a compliment file. All those wonderful cards or notes that you get or a letter of recommendation that, you know, really touched you at some point to take those out and read through them when you've got a low day. Um, go outside, uh, play with your pets. Um, my dog is one of my happiest things in my, in my life. I, I, when I found her at the pound, she obviously knew I needed some self-care because she connected with me pretty quickly. <laughs> um, uh, we do have a few people that have typed things in finally here, actually. Okay, yeah. good. The thing is, yeah, so use the questions section and you go to webinar interface. I It doesn't have a little thing that lets me know someone's typing, so I have to wait till you hit send and, and I see it. So I have to wait and you know, I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, someone says, self-care for me is a giant thing of veggies to munch on at work instead of munching on salty snacks. That is a good, yeah, definitely healthy. Um, that person says, when we were at home, felt like you had to keep working. At work, you always could get up and visit, um, and that Zoom meetings do wear you down. Yep, there's no, sometimes there's nobody to get up and visit at home, except for maybe your dog or your cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and someone, uh, next person says, my coworker and I will go on walks when it's nice. 
and I love doing post-work dancing. Oh, nice. Throw oh, on. Oh, yeah. I have that on my dancing. list. Join my Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. A couple of other ones are you can keep a, a gratitude journal or one of those pay it forward journals. Those are really nice. It's, it's funny how taking care of yourself can also end up taking care of other people in a different way that you're not usually doing. And that giving always, of course, you know, releases some, some good hormones as well. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to take a nap. That's a good, good form of yeah. self-care as well. No, oh, and some of the little crafty things. I enjoy uh, scrapbooking and crocheting, another person says, yep. Yep, those are good. Find on something else, absolutely. Oh, gotta click back on my slide to make it go. Anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and go on, if not. Yeah, go ahead, yep. So um, this is what I call tips from reality for self-care just the easy like just things to remember and you want so you won't get lost and the one the main thing is to pay emotional attention and this is to your attitude to your emotions to your stress factor um, you'll know when it's time and pay attention to that don't ignore it um, or you that's when you get into you know your panic modes your overstress modes so pay emotional attention especially a big one and is to rediscover your joy. The one thing that you know that that always makes you happy. You know, like for me, it's my dog. If I'm having a bad day, I can go go to my dog, and I, I mean, I'm just better instantly. So if you can find that one thing that you know always makes you happy, if it's jelly beans, that's great. If it's Reese's peanut butter cups, even better. So that one little thing that you know will always give you a pick me up. And in the same vein, always have an anchor. The one thing that always will recenter you, it's a little different than re to, than just a little pick me up, like your joy. This is the thing that, that basically grounds you and brings you back to an even keel. And usually this is like a um, an activity or this would be your hobby, you know, that can turn off everything else and give you a minute to refocus. It could even be something as easy as a happy song or a playlist that you listen to when you need it. Mm -hmm. I put on here wise venting. It's good to get some of those things out of your, your system a little bit. Be careful that this doesn't turn into gossiping, however. And for professionals, it's really a good idea to have a, a group of people that you can you know vent to safely. Uh, I've got an a open chat box on in my phone with three other assistant directors in Louisiana that don't live anywhere close to where I do. And we just, you know, share things as, as they come up just to get them out of our system. It's a wonderful tool. I never, I, I didn't realize I was missing that until I met those, that group of ladies. Um, read and listen to advice. Um, it helps to read some of the literature that goes through this. And there's so many great, books and tools for self-care out there i would add it to your routine and then the same vein make time for that don't say well i'll get to it after i finish this book or whatever if, work it in and if you can maybe take a couple of minutes a day in your work routine and add that in as a professional development tool self-care i think is is part of our professional development because if you don't take care of yourself how can you work at you know at the level that your employers expect you to work. Absolutely, yeah. So make time, and of course, you know, audiobooks are a wonderful time saver. I do my, all of, almost all of my reading in the car. I have about a, an hour commute each day, so that oh. I get a lot of reading done, and it's one of my favorite times of the day, actually. It's a good way to um, get ready for the day and wind down for the day at the same time. And then, of course, keep account. And for this, it's like same way as making time. You can keep a calendar. You can also keep a journal. There's actually some published journals now that will guide you through the self-care process at the same time. So look for a couple of those if, if you need some help without just, you know, or keep a regular diary or a gratitude journal, like I mentioned earlier. Journaling, yep. Uh, you mentioned the the wise venting, going back to that. That um, made me think of, and I'm sure possibly, uh, you were talking about the, uh, chat you have with other librarians uh 
here in Nebraska, and I know I've heard from other states too, we have um, our library directors have regular, um, in, re in the different regions of the state, regular get-togethers. Um, and it used to be in person, and uh, with COVID, they've um, all kind of switched to um, online, um, usually through Zoom. And it is usually uh, an open forum, whatever you need to talk about, uh, not recorded for any period of time, so people can discuss whatever they need to, talk about what they need to, and it is really good. And I think um, more of them have been able to participate because it's been on Zoom, and I hope they continue with doing it as that is an option as well. But that get together and having those like weekly, so one of them is weekly, once, um, and like, two of them do it weekly and one does it monthly, I think. I think that's really helped a lot of people to hear what other, um, libraries and other staff are going through and being able to share their concerns and it has been a really a great benefit to everyone i think exactly yeah. and someone did comment when you're talking about audiobooks uh, um that love audiobooks and podcasts that make me laugh oh yeah that's laughing okay. is a form of self-care yes absolutely it works different muscles than we use the rest of the day to frown at our computer <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the quick guide for mindfulness, this one is a little bit deeper than, I, I consider self-care can be fun, but mindfulness is actually a little bit of work and it uses part of the mind that we're not, that we're not usually used to doing. And as I said earlier, this is one of the best acts of self-care and it exercises the brain in a completely different way. Um, so, the, the way to separate the two is to think of self-care as taking care of yourself and mindfulness as an actual practice. And there's three different ways that I think of mindfulness. There's mindfulness moments. In its simplest form, mindfulness is really nothing other than being in the moment, which sounds very simple, but it's how often are we really in the moment. In, um, in Thich Nhat Hanh's book, uh, I'm drawing a blank on on the name of the book. It's my favorite, one of my favorite books. But in his mindful his uh, mindfulness book, he talks about something as simple as washing the dishes. When you're washing the dishes, are you just washing the dishes, or are you thinking about the um, football game that somebody's watching in the other room? Are you worried about the laundry that you need to do after you wash the dishes? Um, are you worried about the dog? that you can't see in the other room making some noise or are you just washing the dishes? So it's just being mindful of the actual thing that you're doing at the minute. Um, a good way to, to practice this is if, you, um, if you're taking a bath, when you wash your hair, that's a good one to start with. If you just think and concentrate on washing your hair, it's not as easy as you think it is. <laughs> um, it's amazing how fast your mind drifts to a, a million places. The um, Buddhists call the mind a monkey mind. It's constantly bouncing everywhere and jumping from tree to tree and thought to thought. So to be able to control that, th that, that thing <laughs> is, is definitely something that takes lots of practice and control. So th that's your simple way of having a mindful moment, is just concentrating on a very specific task and only thinking about that task. So I challenge you to do that at least once today. And yeah, then of course- I, I was actually gonna say, when you mentioned, you know, doing something like wash the dishes and whatever, and what does your mind do? And then you mentioned the shower, it's kind of funny, because I actually know that when I'm in the shower, my mind wanders actually, and I start thinking of things. And I come out of the shower with ideas a lot of, oh, here's a new thing I want to do, here's something for work, or something I want to do in the gardens or whatever. I don't calm my mind. It, it, uh, yeah, I'm like the opposite. So I'm gonna, ha I'll try that next time because it may be a struggle for me. It is, it is, it's a big challenge. And the reason why you, your mind can wander so easily in the shower because you're in a, in a, in a routine. It's yeah. the shower or getting ready in the morning is, is a routine half or driving to work is usually a routine. So um, the way to break those routines is to do it in a different order, to think about it a little different and, and driving to work, taking a different route. That's a good way to, to break that habit because there's been times when it's like I don't even remember driving to work or going home sometimes because my mind is so set on mm -hmm. something else other than the moment that I'm in. Yeah, when I used to work, it seems to be the longer drives your brain kind of zones out because um, 
right now it's for me it's a five minute drive so i'm out in this downtown busy traffic but i yeah. used to drive about 45 minutes to work and i yeah too many times i'm like how did i get here that was <laughs> scary to realize <laughs> yeah and then there's also mindful versions of self-care that incorporate the two like yoga is a good example tai chi is a good example um the use of exercise, stretching, and then of course, breathing, which is the big part of meditation, which um, is really what meditation is all about, focusing on the breath. One of the other things I wanna say is, um, it's okay to say no to other people to take care of yourself. I always mm -hmm. uh, wanna make sure and throw that in, I forgot it earlier. That's a form of self-care that a lot of people don't practice either so sometimes putting yourself first is okay especially when you're about to to drown so don't forget that and another good mindful self-care practice is knowing you're in the zone hobby the hobby where you tend to lose time or the activity that you tend to lose time during covid i was when we were in lockdown i rediscovered and i think a lot of people did because there were hardly any to buy rediscovered the fun of doing jigsaw puzzles and when i would get focused on jigsaw puzzles I mean, I, the hours were just gone. And it's like, I had to remind myself to stop and actually go to bed because I wanted to finish the puzzle <laughs> once I got into it. So um, those are your in the, in, in the zone kind of activities. Mm -hmm. I and get that really, way with the video games that I play. Yeah. I, many nights up late or too many, how many hours, how long have I been sitting here? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. But my brain was concentrating on it and it was calming and it was, um, yeah, it definitely is a break that my, my husband and I both love to take and it really helps because your mind is totally focused on something else. There's a lot of reading involved and a lot of concentration and strategy and it's, yeah, it's a whole different thinking than the things that stress me out. Yeah. And the key to that is to not feel guilty once you do that. <laughs> just remember that. Don't go, oh gosh, I just spent three hours or 30 minutes doing that and I should have been doing A, B, and C. No, that yeah. is definitely a no-no. <laughs> if you're gonna keep keep um, to the self-care route, do not blame yourself for anything. <laughs> okay, so meditation, we're gonna go deeper into meditation and we're actually gonna do a couple of practices um, for each of the different, well, not each of the different kinds, but three of the different kinds of meditation. So Thich Nhat Hanh says that breath is the bridge which connects life to consciousness, which unites your body to your thoughts. And usually in meditation, you focus only on your breathing as um, your central focus so that you kind of empty your brain of everything else. And it is the hardest thing that I think I've ever tried to do in my life. Mm -hmm. um, that monkey mind loves to jump from one thing to the other, you hear a random sound and you start speculating what that sound is. Um, so it is it is very difficult to do. And he also said to meditate with mindful breathing is to bring body and mind back to the present moment so that you do not miss your appointment with life. And to me, that just resonates with, it'll actually make your brain healthier and in the moment when, you, when you're out of your meditation, out of your meditation zone. You can be more mindful as you go through your day and not and not just keep thinking about the next thing to do, the next thing to do, the next thing to do. Actually, it when you get into the practice, unconscious sorry. habit, it becomes an unconscious habit, which is good to get into. Right. Thinking about things that way, yeah. Yeah. So the three different, well, the four different types of meditation is of course, just focusing on your breathing. And usually it's counting breaths or setting a timer and just breathing in and out for a specific period of time. That's the most basic basic um, meditation practice that there is. There's all kinds of different suggestions on how to think about focusing on your breath. One says to try to feel the, the wind passing by your nostrils, which is really difficult for me because I've got a really bad deviated septum. So only one side usually feels that strange way. So I um, usually use some kind of visualization when I'm doing my breathing. The, it kind of came from the app that came on the Apple Watch. It has like a little mandala that kind of blooms when you're supposed to breathe in and then breathe out, it goes away. 
So I kind of visualize these um, mandala looking lilies blooming on a, my field of vision as I breathe in and then they kind of sink back into the water as I breathe out. So anything that helps keep you a little bit focused but your brain away from your constant, constant thoughts is good. A body scan is something you can do to actually help relieve tension in your body. And you think of each part of your body, and we're gonna actually go through one of these in a little bit. We're gonna go from the crown of our head down to our shoulders. So you'll be able to see what that's a little bit like. But to, to start only thinking about specific parts of your body, you'll be able to realize where you carry your stress and how recognizing that can help alleviate that stress and then of course take a large weight off your shoulders. This is also a good practice to do at the end of the day when you're getting ready to go to sleep, especially if you have problems going to sleep like I do some days. I will do a body scan to remind myself of all the places that I need to let go of where my tension is. I'm a jaw clincher for some reason. Mm -hmm. And that will be the very last thing that I tend to let go of before I go to sleep. So doing a body scan at night before going to bed will remind me to to let my jaw go and <laughs> hopefully fall asleep quickly thereafter. <laughs> uh, visualization meditation is, uh, a, I consider it a very poetic meditation thing where you actually use images to uh, visualize, well, exactly, to visualize your, your meditation process. So it is a, a form of mindfulness because you're focusing on each aspect of the visualization. So you can contemplate the snow falling on the mountain, you can contemplate a, a pebble at the bottom of a stream, you can contemplate uh, monks praying in, in their their way or, or however, but we're going to do a little visualization in just a minute too to give you an idea how that works. And you can actually do meditation walking. I haven't tried these and I really don't have a good space to do it, but for those of you that have great, wonderful gardens that you're familiar with. You can do a walking meditation. You don't have to meditate with your eyes closed. The point is to be able to just be able to breathe and move at the same time and to just focus on that walking and the breathing. And it's a, it's supposed to be a, a great way. I'm, one of these days I'm gonna get there, hopefully. And of course I added on guided meditation and that's what we're gonna be doing in a minute when I'm gonna guide you through a couple of meditations. But there's a lot of apps and recordings out there where you can get some guided meditation help if it's if you're having trouble getting started or staying in in the groove if you can find one that you like then that would be a good way to go as well i even included some of those on my handout that you'll be getting oh yeah and I, i'll mention while you actually while you're mentioning that that um the handout and the slides and um so I think the participant recommendations and some text only slides are available on the session page. I uploaded, I added them to there. So if anyone wants to go back to, um, I just did it now while we were you know, trying to do it, um, the actual event page for today's show, you'll have links to all of those. Okay, great. All right, so let's go ahead and do um, their very short practices. You'll be amazed just how a short minute or two can can give you at least a taste of what this could be like. So we're gonna do a breathing meditation. So the way I want you to set up for this is if you're sitting, to just sit straight up with your feet flat on the floor, your hands on your thighs open for an open experience. And you can either close your eyes or close them softly, meaning you know half unfocused gaze to the floor or what have you. And we're gonna do five breaths in and out. So breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. 
last time in. last time out. Okay, take a minute or a moment to bring your eyes back up to focus. How did that make anybody feel? Does anybody feel like sharing what that little experience did for you or didn't do for you? Or if it was hard, because it can be. I had some people say the last time that I did this, they were at the service desk, so they couldn't do it at all. I was like, well, that's, I'm sorry. That is, yeah, that is difficult, I'm sure. Um, I definitely can feel at the end by the fourth or last one, much more calm and relaxed. Uh, yeah, usually on the fourth breath is when it, mm -hmm. when it starts to hit because all that oxygen that you're not normally getting starts hitting yeah. and you kind of feel for me that's when usually when I get to the fourth breath is when I start feeling my um the crown on my head tingle a little bit probably because I haven't been breathing I've been breathing too shallow for most of the day because I was you know mm -hmm. trying to get things done running around crazy so deep breathing even for a few minutes is a powerful thing to, to reduce a lot of mm -hmm. stress quickly so yeah. don't don't forget about that and Actual, we do have comments coming in uh, from people. Some um, one person says, "I always get so relaxed when I remember to breathe." Yes. Yes, yeah, something you don't think about. And uh, some other comments: "It's amazing, relaxing. It felt great." <laughs> yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So if you can even take start with five minutes a day of focused breathing and trying to keep the mind clear, that's that's your starting goal. And then if you can get up to 10, then you're practically a pro. Because <laughs> 10 is very, very hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just to be able to do it at least once or twice a day. Um, my, so my biggest thing I is tend trying to, to get hold, up. Someone asked just, as I tend to hold my breath without realizing it. So yes. this is great to like actually think about, I need to actually breathe. You know, they sell you to do it, but actually practicing it is a whole different thing. Yeah. 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 And there is a moment between breaths too that that you can focus on, like um, like I was talking about the flower or the mandala blooming. So when you breathe in, and then there's that pause where there's really no breath, you know, there's just mm -hmm. there's just really nothing. So you can take that minute to visualize the, you know, look at the, I I look at the flower or what have you, and then when I breathe out, and then there's another pause, and you can just see it float away. I mean, it it sounds kind of silly, but it is a way, I mean, it's very relaxing for me. So if you can find that way of visualizing something that works for you, then that would be a good way to get going. Any other questions or comments? No, not right now. Okay. All right, so the next one we're going to do is a short body scan. And uh, it's not really much of the body. It's just going to be the head and to the shoulders. So we're going to start um, at the top of our head. So again, sit straight up with your feet flat on the floor your hands on your thighs open, your eyes either closed or softly closed. And as we breathe in, we're gonna concentrate on one part of the body and then we will breathe out. So think about breathing into that part of the body, noticing what's going on in that part of the body and then breathing out if there's any tension or pain there, think about it going away as you breathe out. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Think about the crown of your head, only the crown of your head. Breathe in to the crown of your head. And breathe out. Now focus on your forehead, only your forehead. Breathe in to your forehead. And breathe out. Now focus on your eyes. Breathe into your eyes. and breathe out.
Now think of your jaw. Breathe into your jaw. And breathe out. Now think of your neck, your entire neck. Big breath into your neck. Breathe in. And breathe out. Lastly, focus on your shoulders. Breathe into your shoulders, big breath. Breathe in. And then breathe out. All right, take a moment to refocus. Hopefully we wa um, lost a little bit of tension somewhere. I know, I, I do know when I am stressed, I get the back of the head headaches. I've oh yeah. Tired. That's a thing. And I can, I know that's a place that I will concentrate on for doing this because that is yes. just, uh, Especially if it gets to a point where it, it seems to be like a little bug in your bonnet and then a little bit of deep breathing on it might actually do a little bit more than you think it would just just mm -hmm. or in practice. It's telling me I have a slow connection. I'm going to turn my webcam off. Okay. Oh, oh, internet connection. Yeah, I'm, which is kind of odd for us, but We've been having lots and lots of rain lately, so that may be more of it. Okay, so the last meditation we're going to do is the visualization meditation. And we're going to go on a little, um, a little journey as a leaf here. <laughs> so again, sit up straight, feet flat on the floor, your hands palm up on your thighs, relaxed, eyes closed or softly focused. And to begin your visualization, think of a lovely tree on the edge of a stream. The best tree you can visualize. Breathe in. And breathe out. A breeze goes through the leaves of the tree. Breathe in and breathe out. One leaf breaks away from the branch in the breeze. Breathe in and breathe out. The leaf floats down on the breeze. Breathe in and breathe out. And ever so lightly, the leaf lands on the water in the stream. Breathe in and breathe out. The leaf floats down the stream and around the corner on another journey. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay, take a moment to refocus. Usually there's a couple of comments about that method of doing a meditation, it's a little different. Yeah, so anybody have any, uh, what did you think of that one or the uh, previous one too, type go ahead and share. I like that one. And someone says, I love this, it was calming and relaxing. Mm -hmm. 
yes, I wish I was sitting by the tree. <laughs> Somewhere where I used to live, I lived in an apartment that was right in the middle of the city, but there was a park walking distance. And I used to go to this park and bring magazines and sit on the grass and just read. And it was similar to that. Just get away from the cars and the noise and uh, let's see. So let's see. We've got a lot of comments coming in for this one. Yeah, um, I liked that one. Connecting to nature helps me feel more grounded. Absolutely. Um, yep. Another person says, I like visual visualization. Can go to a happy place like forests and streams and lakes. Yes. Um, fall is my favorite, so I was right there by the stream watching the leaf. <laughs> Uh, and someone else has a suggestion. They said, I use sound. There's a website at tree.fm, like FM radio, that is nothing okay. but forest sounds from around the world. Ooh. Nice, nice. That's one of the things actually I'm going to talk about on the next slide is using sound. So that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And someone did say in the beginning, unfortunately, <laughs> this is a different, different kind of comment. We're getting a new roof and they're up there stomping around right now. Very oh. distracting. So this would, is a perfect time you might need some of this stress release and use some of these techniques. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. That Someone else seconds the tree.fm dot, tree website, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so just like before, these are some um, tips from reality for the mindfulness practice. Of course, again, you can apply the same ones from self-care, pay emotional attention, when it's time to practice this, you'll know. Um, have an anchor, like your type of mindfulness practice that you know is an anchor for you to get back into the practice. For me, it's the body scan. It's an easy way for me to remember the value of this practice. Um, read and listen to advice. Another thing, there are so many different versions of books out there on how to practice mindfulness and meditation and different points of view from traditional which is what I'm, I'm give you as um, my main focus or to the more fun and funny versions of which I think I have a few as well on your handout but um, find the voice that you like and and go with that that version so do read and listen to different types of material for this as well and of course you've got to make time and you can still keep account with this at the same time, they uh, publishers are starting to make mindfulness journals too, um, just like the other ones I mentioned earlier. But as well as that, keep in mind that mindfulness is a moment and it is not a monument that you're trying to move. You're doing one thing at a time, one breath at a time, and you have to practice, practice, practice. And even when you stop for a long, long time, which I actually did, I was guilty of it. And um, just to begin again is, is the is the point Tish Nhat Han said the future is being made out of the present so the best way you can take care of the future is to take care of the present moment so moments not monuments mm -hmm. you need to recognize accept and continue accept your feelings your faults your failures and acknowledge them and love them you have to forgive yourself first and however you feel is how you feel even regret so don't beat yourself up over anything when it comes to this practice. Be attention seeker. Of course, this is going back to the body scan. Know where your problem areas are and seek them out and hunt them down and, and try and, and aggressively get rid of them if you can. And here I've got the soundscapes. There are lots of different ways to use sound, white noise to drown out, hopefully some of the noises that would distract you. There's in uh, full meditation practice, there's what they call sound baths with the Tibetan singing bowls. Um, I, I think I even gave you a, um, a Spotify soundtrack that has some um, sound bath things. And then if you can find some music that works for you that kind of makes you drift, then that will do the same kind of thing too. And of course, stay mindful. That is easier said than done. Um, but remember, your problem will be there later, and your mind won't be so fatigued from the worry, and you'll be able to handle it a lot more eas easily if you can take a couple of minutes to be mindful. Give your brain and your stressed shoulders a break for a minute. And of let go. Let go is one of the hard ones. 
for a lot of people. Um, there is an art to letting go. It is a practice and it may take more than once to succeed. Because some things are big that we deal with. You can visualize letting go by when you breathe in, you gather the thing towards you and as you breathe out, you push it away. Um, John Kabat-Zinn says, to let go means to give up coercing, resisting, or struggling in exchange for something more powerful and wholesome, which comes out of allowing things to be as they are without getting caught up in your attraction to or rejection of them. It's akin to letting your palm open to unhand something you have been holding on to. And of course, in the end, just breathe. Breath is what keeps us going and it um, oxygenates our blood. So at the end of it all, if you can hang on to one, one thing, just breathe, just breathe. All right, so that brings me to the end of the presentation. I wanna tell you the three main resources that I recommend. If you're gonna read three things, these are the three for you to read. The Wherever You Go, There You Are by John Kabat-Zinn, which I've quoted a couple of times in the presentation and The Miracle of Mindfulness, an Introduction to the Practice of Meditation by Thich Nhat Hanh, which I quoted quite often in the presentation. And for self-care, this one is a bunch of fun, so I have to put it as my main one for self-care. It's called Wisdom of a Humble Jellyfish and Other Self-Care Rituals from Nature. And um, Shaw goes through all of these different animals and their little quirks and how that's their form of self-care and how she translates it into how we can take care of ourselves. So you learn about some fun animals and then you hear all these weird little stories and it helps you remember how to take care of yourself. So it's, it's a great little book. I really liked it. So check those three out if you've got the time. And if not, I've got a handout full of more things for, from books and audiobooks to online resources. And of course the it's a couple of guided meditations and then your music and sound recommendations as well. And another one of the handouts that you got, I did this presentation for the virtual conference for Association of Rural Small Libraries and I had a ton of feedback from participants about things that they do and apps that they use and books that they liked. So I've included all of the things that they shared during that presentation with you as well. So as I said, there's no right way to do this. You find your own path and it is the right path, as long as you walk it. So um, hopefully you can begin to practice today. Awesome, oh, thank you so much, Jeremy. Um, if anybody has any questions or anything else you wanna share, go ahead and type into the chat. Um, I think this was, this was wonderful. Um, I'm really interested in that uh, jellyfish book. I think I may have to seek that one out. Um, it's good to know that this doesn't have to be work. It can, it's fun, it can be fun. Yes, it can be fun, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, um, I know for myself, I'm probably gonna have a much more relaxing day for the rest of the day since I did all of this breathing. I feel much more more mellowed out and, and, and in, in spite of the heat in my office right now, I'm not as annoyed about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it does help with those, even the little things. I mean, a little bit of breathing goes a long way. Same thing with like, me but I was I got up and I was really tired this morning coffee didn't even help and I was here and I was like I've got this presentation I've got to get ready so I did you know a couple minutes of breathing and you know just helps actually wake you up as well so mm -hmm. yeah you're feeling yeah, sluggish in the afternoon very much for a wonderful session someone does this as well yeah um, oh, and someone else suggests it's great to do before a road trip too in case road trip may be stressful or a lot of things you got to be figuring out and dealing with Yes. Yeah, if there's an event you know coming up, it's gonna be stressful or gonna be very busy or overwhelming. Do some of this ahead of time to just start out with a more calm viewpoint, maybe. Yeah. All right. Um, I think you have your last slide here with your uh, contact info. Yeah. There. Yeah. Feel free to send me an email or call me if you have a question or yeah. anything. Yeah. 
And oh, somebody just suggest um, we need some of these books in our libraries. Yeah, absolutely. Those titles definitely would be good to check your collections and see if you have them or if not, add them for both your use and any of your um, patrons' use. Of patrons' course. use. Yeah. And if you want to, and if you want to sneak in your own um, mindfulness training at work, you could do it as a program for patrons, and then you could help you could help yourself at the same time. Absolutely. Isn't that funny how we can help ourselves through our work? <laughs> One of the and a lot of these titles are available through Hoopla. If you have Hoopla mm -hmm. at your libraries, sure, sure. Um, we have an OverDrive group here. I don't know if they're in there. I'm going to have to look and see as well if they're in there or not. All right, I am gonna pull, because people have been asking, and, I, and we've been talking about the handouts and things, I'm gonna pull presenter control back to my screen to show you, share it to all of you guys here. Um, yes, you'd mentioned the presentation and the handouts that Jeremy had. This is the session page for today's show where you may have gone to register if you did or to log in. Um, where we have links to um, the slides that he used today, um, text only version of those slides and then um, the handout and the participant recommendations. We post these all on a SlideShare account that we use here. Um, so you have, you can look at them here, you can download them from here, whatever um, works for you. So here's some other books and websites and things that what you would recommend say, saying that from other people who had attended at the Association for Real Small Libraries conference. And, and one of the things on that one is a couple of people shared some great resources to get kids going with mindfulness and meditation. Yeah, well. I so. saw that breathe like a bear and I'm like, what? Oh, 30 mindful moments for kids. Yeah. Which many of I mean, them- I think we would have a couple of board books at the library that, that are mindfulness babies already, so yeah. And then other websites to go to. <clears throat> and ideas from people. So these are all linked from here on the session page. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, we are recording the show and when um, I do the recording, I'll show you where that will be. This is our main Encompass Live page. And um, if you just, you, know, you guys are here, so you may have already found the page, but um, if you just Google Encompass Live or use your search engine of choice. We're the only thing called that on the internet right now. So nobody's allowed to use that name. You'll come up with our page and our upcoming shows are listed here, but at the very bottom of them is a link to our archive shows. Our most recent one at the top. And uh, so today's will be there, should be up and, and ready for everybody by at the latest, the end of the day tomorrow. And what I do is I copy this page with all those links and then there'll be an added link to like last week's, the view of the recording on our YouTube channel. So that will be there along with the other links. This is the one from last week, just to show you as an example. So um, we'll have that up there. Uh, everyone who attended today or registered for today's show will get an email from me directly to you, letting you know when the recording is ready and, and available for you to watch. Uh, while we're here, I'll show you, we do have a search feature in our archives, so you can search, look for any other topics, see if we've done a show on it. You can search the whole archive or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just current. Um, and that is because this is our full show archives. I'm going to scroll down a bit here. I'm not going to scroll all the way down. I don't want to go crazy here. Um, we, Encompass Live, premiered in January 2009. So we've been on the show, on the on for over 10 years and we do have all of our recordings going back to the first one here on our site. Um, we're librarians, that's what we do, we save and archive historical information sometimes and we'll keep them here as long as we can, um, as long as there's somewhere to host them, but do pay attention when you are watching any of the recordings, look at the original broadcast date. Um, many of our shows will stand the test of time, book reading lists, some um, session, you know, programming things maybe, but some things may become outdated. Um, products and services may no longer exist anymore. They have been changed drastically. Websites or links might be broken. Um, but uh, we, you know, as I said, we'll keep things up here anyways, but just pay attention to when the date was just in case something seems to be old or missing when you are looking through our archives. <clears throat> so like I said, all of these links will be available when I give you the information for uh, the archive. Um, and I did open up over here that tree.fm site. You can listen to a random forest. Let's see. Mm -hmm. 
I love it. That one's a lot of birds. Different birds. So lots of different ones you can listen to here. I'm definitely going to be perusing some of those, I guarantee. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I need to add that into my list. Yeah, I think I might I might link to it and I'll add it to the session page too, since we have it here. Yeah. And this is a um, Creative Commons where people have submitted their, I looked at it while I was there, someone talked about it. Um, um, anyone can submit sounds of their forest onto here and it's to help, um, you know, uh, for climate change and everything, but they do, um, yeah, Creative Commons share alike um, agreements. So, uh, nice. Nice resource. All right. <clears throat> And oh, someone just mentioned the tree.fm recordings will loop, so it'll just keep playing, which is nice. So you can just oh, that let is it. Nice. I know sometimes people use this kind of thing. I know my husband has used things like this sounds um, on his tablet to help him get to sleep at night. Yeah. He just sleeping in silence was does not work to calm him. He needed something, so he would. He likes thunderstorms actually, which is. Yeah, some people do like thunderstorms. I just listen to white noise when I sleep. Yeah, I mean that's good. Well, actually, it's brown noise. <laughs> brown noise. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that would be good for that too. All right, all right. So, um, oh yeah, fan going, fan sound that creates white noise too. Yep, yes. That would be something someone yeah. says absolutely. All right, so I think that'll wrap it up today. Um, any last words, Jeremy? Like I said, just try it, practice, yes. and good. to make a start is the only way to begin. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I hope this will inspire you to do a little bit of that. Yeah, awesome. All right, so let me get back to our main Encompass Live page here. Okay, um, so as I said, you'll all find, you'll hear from me tomorrow with a recording. Um, we do have a Facebook page, as you can see, I linked to it. Here's our Facebook page here. Um, if you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We post reminders about the show. Here's a reminder to log into today's show, information about our speakers, and when the recording is ready, we announce it on here as well. Um, so if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Um, otherwise, we do have a hashtag and comp live little abbreviation um, where we do post on Twitter and Instagram as well. So if you want to follow us there or just keep an eye on our website, uh, look where we are. We have our upcoming shows. Um, we have our shows booked up all the way into August. You can see what we have coming up. Um, next week, it's going to be about teaching technology in the library. Um, we have a series we've been starting, you may have seen that in our archives, a four-part series that our technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, is doing about teaching technology in the library. And part two is next week. Part three is July 14th and part four, July 28th. Part one is already out there recording, but if you want to join us for next week to learn how do people, learn about how people learn, definitely sign up for that one. You can sign up for all the other ones. Um, and any of our other shows we have coming up after that, we're going to be talking about something we may need some stress relief to deal with, bed bugs in the library. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> so um, please do sign up for any of our other shows coming up. Um, so thank you, everybody, for being with us this morning. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I'm feeling very calm for the rest of my day. <laughs> Um, and hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. thank you, Krista. You're welcome. Glad to have you. I think this is great. Thanks. <laughs>